Oh, good. Part one of something. We begin with Zartan and the Dreadnoughts, stealing some blueprints and something called a matter transmuter. We're not sure what it is just yet, but I'd wager it's more dangerous than something you'd see in a single episode, but less dangerous than a device you'd build in one of those five-parters. Meanwhile, Cobra Commander and Destro are literally holed up inside a tree this week. Those fancy headquarters just keep getting crummier and crummier. Next week, I can only assume they'll all be hanging out in a dumpster. Or maybe in, like, Florida. <laughs> they give us the lowdown on this matter transmuter thing. Apparently it can change the molecular structure of things. Like how they turn this apple into a blue apple. Or in perhaps a more relevant demonstration, how they turn this safe into a safe made of tissue paper. Diabolical! Meanwhile, the Joes are doing their Joe thing, and some dude named Steeler whines about how he can't keep a girlfriend because G.I. Joe keeps him busy all the time. Lady J tells him to put a sock in it, which seems kind of unfair because I'm like 90% sure she and Flint are a thing, so this is not a problem she can relate to. Then the show continues advancing its weird hang glider agenda as Flint chases Zartan and engages in some of the worst action scene quipping I've ever heard. Terrible shooting, Zartan! What's the matter, old Flint? Up a tree, are you? <laughs> Just terrible. Zartan and his boys lead the Joes right to the Keebler Cobra factory, but the Cobra Brain Trust escapes in time. A rocket! A camouflaged rocket! We can tell our grandkids about that, Flint. All right, first of all, Flint's actual kid is going to be an astronaut, so I doubt her kids will be all that impressed by the fact that you saw a rocket once. Second, it's only about five minutes in, but I doubt a rocket hidden inside a tree is the weirdest thing we'll even see in this episode, much less the weirdest thing G.I. Joe has ever seen. Were you not aware that we once had a space shuttle hijacked by knockoff Mogwais who turned into giant minotaurs at the toot of a whistle? Just to pick one of many, many examples. Steeler whines some more and contemplates quitting, but since I have literally never seen this character before, I really can't be bothered to care all that much. Meanwhile, Flint and Lady J are hanging out with a scientist who's working on that whole matter transmuter technology on a secret lab hidden inside a train. Is that weirder than Tree Rocket? Eh, probably equally weird, but there's still lots of time. The scientist in question is clearly voiced by the same woman who voices the Baroness, which means there's like an 80-20 chance she's actually the Baroness in disguise, and oh look, there she is. And the general is Zartan. Naturally. In the ensuing action sequence, a bunch of Joes find themselves hanging off a precarious train bridge, which the matter transmuter turns into glass. That may be weirder than a rocket in a tree, but the fact that the Joes have all been pushed into an alternate reality in the process definitely is. So maybe this is the thing you'll tell your grand kids about Steeler. The Joes are attacked by cobras and seek cover in a perfectly sensible looking cave that definitely in no way resembles the fangs on the cobra logo. Inside, they find a bunch of working G.I. Joe vehicles with the keys left in the ignition. So they all pile into one of them for some reason, rather than seeing if maybe more than one of them works. Sure, that seems sensible. And safe. I mean, at least most of them are wearing helmets. Eventually, they reach a little general store type place called Bargains, which includes among its inventory eight working motorcycles and apparently Flint is carrying enough cash to cover this purchase. Like, I get that the CO might be carrying a magic limitless credit card or something, but the only way he could be holding that much paper money is if it's rolled up in those little tubes on his bandolier. Since paper money neatly avoids the hassle of that awkward chip and pin situation, uh, do, do I slide it or insert the card? Why is it buzzing at me? Did I do something wrong? The kindly old shopkeeper hassles Flint in a different way by demanding that he submit to a retina scan. This is where we find out the incredibly obvious fact that we're in an alternate reality where the Nazis won scenario, only the Nazis are Cobra. And in the show's defense, this wasn't nearly the cliche it is now back in the mid 80s. Alternate reality stories are pretty standard now, but I can't remember a ton of them in the other cartoons I was watching around this time. By which I mean Transformers. I don't know, maybe the Thundercats traveled to a reality in which Snarf never existed? If that did happen, I would very much like to watch that episode. Anyway, the government in this reality is Cobra, and they're testing crazy weapons like the Weather Dominator. That's a callback, kids. And some other biological stuff, which explains the weird pink bug that bit Steeler earlier. Oh, right, I forgot to mention that he appears to be dying. Mostly because I didn't care all that much. The Joes break into their headquarters, which has long since been closed by Cobra Commander. Then some Joes go out on reconnaissance and are spotted by the cops, who are the Dreadnoughts. Some other Joes catch a glimpse of Mount Rushmore, which now features Cobra Commander and Destro, though still Washington and Lincoln. I guess Cobra Commander felt bad about replacing old Honest Abe on his own memorial in D.C., so he let him keep his spot on Mount Rushmore. 
That was nice of him. I do kind of love how every major world landmark has been personalized with Cobra imagery. It's very in character for Cobra Commander, probably even more so after the indignity of the headquarters inside an unmarked tree. Meanwhile, the Baroness is doing pretty all right for herself with underlings who dress like this, and at least one giant statue of her, so this reality isn't all bad. 